What's up guys? Happy Memorial Day, first off. Today, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my experiences using an insulin pump uh, for the first time since I was 17 years old. I got back on at the beginning of this year um, and I have decided after a couple months that I'm really not a huge fan. So I just wanted to sort of break down my reasoning for why. Again, um, this is my personal experience. You might thrive on the pump. Um, but I just wanted to share a little bit about how it went when I used the Omnipod pump and the closed loop insulin system. So my first reason why I'm not a huge pump fan is because there's too many variables involved. So when I'm using my long acting insulin, which is Traceba, um, there's really not a whole lot of variables. So I give my long acting insulin, I take a Frezza for my mealtime insulin, and then I have exercise and movement throughout the day. Those are like the big three variables that go into controlling my blood sugar. And when something goes wrong, it's usually human error, something that I do um, that messes up my blood sugars, right? But then when I started using the pump, there's all these new things that I started having to think about. Like, is the cannula seated right under my skin? Is insulin absorbing properly from a certain spot? Um, so all these new things, and even just the fear of having the pod fail, which did happen to me a couple times. And the big one for me was really the insulin absorption. So with the Omnipod, I had a lot of absorption issues and a lot of different spots on my body, which I didn't expect because I haven't been on a pump in years. I've just been using um, my long acting shot once every morning. So especially the back of my arms, which was the site that I was most excited about using with the Omnipod, I couldn't even use because apparently there was some scar tissue or it must have been leaner there or something and every time I put a site there it just would not work like my basal would not work my numbers would skyrocket every time so that was a big letdown so the next big thing for me why I wanted to switch to a pump in the first place was to be able to adjust my basal rates on the fly so it was really exciting for me to you know be able to change my basal rate like lower my numbers before I was going to go on a long bike ride for example but what I found was that my life wasn't really predictable enough to really be adjusting my basal rates on the fly anyway. So it ended up not really changing anything. So when I'm on my long acting insulin, if I'm gonna go for a long bike ride, I'll eat a couple snacks beforehand to bring my number to a higher level so that you know I don't drop while I'm out riding. Um, and I found I would have to do the same thing on a pump because most of the time when I go on a bike ride, it's not four hours before where I can pre-plan and say, okay, I'm gonna drop my basal rate by this much three hours before to make sure I don't plummet during my ride. And I found that most of the time when I was about to go out on a bike ride, it would be like five minutes before that I'd actually decide to leave. So again, if you're in this very set routine of going to work, going to school, exercising at the same time every day, it can be really great. But for someone who's always changing, always doing different things, um, it just didn't really work well for me personally. Some people, again, can really thrive on it. Okay, so my next point is the constant sight changes. My long acting shot that I was so used to, super quick, took me five seconds in the morning and it was done for the rest of the day. Sight change, I would take all this time to compile everything together, all the supplies, it took more time to do the actual sight change itself. And then for the next like five or six hours afterwards, I'd be worried that my, that I wasn't getting insulin, and you know, maybe I should have given more of a bolus on the old site and then more of a bolus on the new site to, to keep me steady. So it was just all these different things floating through my head and it ended up being way more complicated than my old method that I knew and loved. And I feel like I'm so busy mentally and physically as it is that having these worries and the site changes to do every three days just ended up being too much for me. Okay, and then my next point, uh, for someone as active as I am, it was really no bueno having all of that active insulin kind of floating around my blood all the time. I was so used to a Frezza, which is a very fast acting insulin. It comes in your system and it leaves immediately to Novolog, which takes a while to get into your system and then takes a couple hours to get out of your system. And that can be okay for someone if you know they eat one or two big meals a day. But for me, I'm eating a bunch of small little meals, sometimes like five or six throughout the day, right? And I'm also moving a lot. I take a lot of small little movement breaks throughout the day. So if you combine those two together, a lot of small meals and me moving all the time, 
it's a recipe for always having active insulin and always going low. So I was having a lot of low blood sugars. So with the pump, I also found that I was spending way more time on my diabetes itself. So I was constantly making these little tweaks, uh, making these micro boluses, obsessing over my ratios, always changing something, always looking at my blood sugars. And of course it's good to strive for success and always want to change things, but this became a little like over obsession and I was just constantly checking my phone, checking the loop app, checking my Omnipod PDM when I wasn't looping. Um, so again, it was just like with diabetes itself, it takes up so much of your time anyway that obsessing over the numbers isn't really gonna help. And I'm the kind of person that loves being able to take my technology, turn it off and, you know, go out and enjoy nature. And when I was using looping, I had everything on my phone. And then when I was using the PDM, I had to carry my phone, a PDM and the Dexcom receiver. So there was just all these different devices, all this technology. I was spending way too much time on them, way too much screen time. Um, and I just felt kind of like tethered to everything. Like I couldn't leave my phone anywhere without it disconnecting. Um, I couldn't, you know, leave my PDM too far away because what if I had to change some levels? So for me personally, in my diabetes care, I really want something that is the most low maintenance with the best results. And for me, that wasn't the pump. That's long acting shots plus Frezza. Okay, so my last point is I kind of felt like my intuition ended up being right more of the time than the diabetes technology itself. So anyone that wears a Dexcom knows that it's not always spot on and you have to trust your body and know that when something, when it says something on the screen, it might not be exactly what's going on with your actual blood sugars. And the same would go for the pump. So even with the closed loop system that's supposed to track everything and make all these little changes for you, which is really cool, I felt like I was always, I knew my body better. So I was always sort of overriding what it wanted to do. Um, and that always led to some issues, obviously. And some may say that I should have taken a lot more time to get all my settings really dialed in. But for me, I mean, it, I was on it for a good couple of months and I felt like by then I should have had a little bit of a grasp on it, but like my numbers were all over the place. So two big takeaways. Keep in mind that these were my experiences and this was my opinion on everything. So. These things that were issues for me might not be issues for you. I know people who thrive on Afreza and Terceba. I know people who th thrive on Lantus and Novolog shots. I know people who thrive on insulin pumps and closed loop systems. And what it really comes down to is it's about the diligence of the person that's on the pump or the shots and less about exactly which diabetes treatment they're using. It's more about how much time and effort you put into caring for your diabetes. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more holistic health and diabetes education related content and be on the lookout for Positively Type 1 coming out June 16th on Amazon.